I was uh, working on a project on uh, education in public schools, um, and I had not really ever thought about teaching law. So I made some very uh, indirect inquiries. Now this is 1971, and the word came back, oh no. First of all, you're too young, I was told, but worse, you're a woman. One of the, the great, great ironies of life is I came here as the first clinical teacher. She came here as either the first or second woman in the modern era. Uh, two of the lowest, lowest, lowest people on the Georgetown totem. My job is reading through somewhere between seven and 9,000 applications, making decisions on all those applications, and then trying to persuade all of those admitted students that Georgetown is the place that they want to go. Physically, what I saw when I got here at the law school was a lot of concrete. The school itself was brand new, the building, but from the very beginning, it was just full, everywhere you looked. It was still a bit of an outpost. I would call occasionally to be picked up uh, by a taxi cab, and I'd try to describe to them where to come, and they were very skeptical. 600 New Jersey Avenue? No, there's no such address, lady. When I first went to Georgetown, the very first time, sat in on a commercial law class. I wasn't in law school. I was about to teach French to high school students. 20 years later, I was teaching commercial law at Georgetown. When I came in 1980, I found a, a school that was very much in transition. And by that, I mean it was clear that we were on a sharp upward swing, wonderfully new, energetic faculty, and very welcoming and wise older faculty members. The quality of the education, regardless of how we felt about the place, was outstanding. I can hear Richard Allen Gordon right now teaching contracts going, murmurings, mere murmurings. That first year, Frank Flegel, Joe Page, Sherm Cohn, Sam Dash, it was the juvenile justice clinic that really cemented me to this school. I can see Wally Malenik throwing photographs out, get these into evidence. We came here essentially to practice law and to, uh, to teach students how to practice law, but not to engage in high theory while doing it. We're the biggest clinical program in America. And people all over the world know about Georgetown. Taking a field trip to Gideon's law firm. Nine o'clock is when we're When I had the offer from Georgetown uh, to come uh, and leave Washington University in St. Louis and come to Georgetown, I didn't think Sam was going to be happy about it. And so I said, well, Sam, you know how sometimes a player gets traded from one team to another? Well, now I have an offer to join Georgetown. And as I'm telling this to him, his eyes are getting brighter and brighter and brighter, and he's getting more and more excited. He said, well, I just can't believe that you might play for John Thompson. What I see now is the transformation. The school has soul. The school has spirit. The faculty is collegial, and there's a real bond now between the faculty and the students. It's a wonderful place. My daughter just graduated this June, so I speak from hearing her. I leave at my apartment about 9 in the morning. I come here, and I literally stay here till midnight almost every day, which is either pathetic or I'm just <laughs> enjoying what I'm doing. There's just more people and more social things going on here. So I'm not saying I'm studying here the whole time, but just hanging out. I think it's funny that like, the rumor still seems to be that, oh, it's so big and it's so impersonal because you know, I'm sure you guys experience this in student ambassadors. Like the biggest question we get mm -hmm. is, oh, what about the size? And having been here, I can't imagine being somewhere right. smaller. Yeah. I think I I'd feel really agree. cramped if I were somewhere smaller. That was my biggest concern about coming to Georgetown. I was so nervous about the size and everyone would try to calm me down. But when I got here, I really understood what they were talking about. One of the things that I love about teaching at Georgetown is I am just as likely to have someone who is an MD in my class as someone who is a dancer, uh, someone who is a scientist. It really has what I would call the gospel values. 
public service, noblesse oblige, a responsibility to this community and the community at large. And I think one of the best ways you build a sense of community is that you don't focus inwardly but externally. These values are rooted in Georgetown, have always been here, are still being emphasized. I'm not someone who is sort of an institution person. I don't think of institutions the way I think of, of people. Uh, they don't tend to have hearts and souls. Uh, this institution comes close to having a heart and a soul. and In fact, I think it has one. Uh, it's a pretty special place, um, and it's hard to put your finger exactly on why. I'm writing a paper in a, in a seminar class. It's coming up. I'm kind of struggling with formulating my, my thesis, what I'm going to contribute that's new. And I was walking outside of class, and you know, Professor Din's always hanging out in front of the building, having a smoke. <laughs> and I, and I, I walk by him, and I turn around and go, uh, Professor Din, um, are you writing a paper on preemption? He's like, follow me. And he takes me, he takes me up in his office, he copies his paper that hasn't even been published yet. Uh, he gives me like three other articles. I walked out of his, I, I didn't have time for him almost. I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of busy. He's like, no, no, come, come and do this. You can't say that it's not stressful for the students, because it is. But there's something supportive about the community which really helps people get through that and thrive in it. And the only thing I've been able to come up with when I think about it is that this is an institution which is very secure with what it's doing, what it's done, with where it's going. The key was that we had a series of good deeds, each of whom was the right dean for the moment, and were able to make all those administrators feel so much a part of that that they never wanted to leave. Georgetown is still becoming part of that sense of, of striving to be stronger academically, to be stronger as a community, is uh, part of what keeps us flexible. If there was a better way to do it, we'll try and do it. It's part of why faculty stay as long as they do. I know, sitting in my office, how many offers our faculty get from other very good schools. To see the things that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Father O'Donovan, thank you for giving me another chance to come back to Georgetown. And Dean Noreen, thank you for giving me a chance to come to the law school. Georgetown Law School has given more talent to this administration than any other single institution in America. Yeah, if you just look at all the bulletin boards, that it's difficult sometimes uh, to choose. There was a symposium last night um, addressing the upcoming court case, um, Dickerson, that potentially could overrule Miranda. Students put it together. Good evening, everybody, and thank you all very, very much for coming tonight to this, the Greenhall Symposium. And it got really heated at times. Constitution. Would you agree? Yeah, what, what do you mean? Legislation is It's either a rule in the Constitution or it isn't. It is a rule in the Constitution as interpreted. That I just thought it was an amazing intellectual discussion. My focus is on students. It's extraordinarily important that they feel comfortable, that they feel that there are places for them to literally and physically hang out. I think the best part of my job is getting to know a group of first-year students called student ambassadors who are volunteering their time to work with me. It's all about paying attention to what the students need. To talk to them now about what the physical facilities were like up until 1989, you might as well be talking to them about when dinosaurs prowled the earth. Did anyone the Mickey Awards here? I did. And I thought that was great. That was another reason why I came to Georgetown, was because I loved the whole housing thing. I think it's a great sense of campus. Last year I gave a tour to the alumni and they were also shocked and they couldn't stop looking at Gee Wars and standing on the 12th floor and looking over the view and walking through the library and they were just amazed. The key to the whole thing was the library, where we happen to be sitting right now. I love the library and actually really love it during finals time, which is the opposite <laughs> of most people. The, the reason I think it's so, it's so big, it's just like this big arc and everyone's in the same boat and everyone's got the same stresses. The only time I come into the library actually is to sleep. There's a lounge on the <laughs> foot or the fifth floor. You can put two of those like big just, like sofa chairs together and I, I've slept there yesterday for like two hours and like hard sleep, not the kind of like, you know, really quality sleep. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> but I don't do any of my studying here, just my sleeping. The heart of a great law school is a great library.
and I think the opening of the library, I remember it well. This wasn't going to be just any law school. This had become and continues to be one of the great law schools, and the building made that dream real. When faculty feel not just empowered, but encouraged to dream their dreams, that's what keeps the momentum. Rich Lazarus fathered to count, and it turns out we actually have as many faculty as any other law school who have ever argued before the Supreme Court. We moot anywhere from 25 to 40 percent of the cases uh, before the Supreme Court. For the students, it's pretty wonderful. The students watch the moot ahead of time, before the argument. Then they go watch the argument itself in front of the Supreme Court. We were online at 6.30 in the morning at the Supreme Court and got in and got to see the same lawyer and hear him put into practice all the stuff that Georgetown professors had told him to do and we saw you know, the justices try to steer him into the traps that the professor said he was going to get steered into and I just thought that was amazing as a first year student to go from class to the mooting to the court and see all of that. And then we've had to meet with each of the attorneys from all sides who've argued the case. The idea is to bring all these things together, the scholarship, the teaching, the service. And my expectation is that it won't be too long before Georgetown becomes the place that almost everyone will want to come and do the move here. We're calling it the Georgetown University Supreme Court Institute. Clearly no other law school could do it. We now have 100 people on the faculty here, which makes us the largest law faculty in the country. It's more important than ever that we train law students who are able to work across national boundaries and across disciplines. At the same time, we need to really be in touch with our alumni about how their practice is changing. You can't have a great law school in the future without that kind of support from our graduates because they're going to keep us on the right path in terms of understanding where our legal practice is headed. We have, I think, 600 alumni that returned this week for the reunion weekend. We put on three separate programs this morning. It is my privilege to introduce to all of you the Chief Justice of the United States, William H. Rehnquist. And I think it's a sense of people who are returning to the law school because they see good things happening here, look at the place now and say, well, maybe they really listened to me. Maybe they listened when I said it was too crowded. Maybe they listened when they said, this office isn't working, because now the students seem to think it is. So maybe I had something to do with that. I almost cried when I came back yesterday. When I walked into the moot courtroom after 25 years, I just got an incredible sense of pride and a sense that I've been blessed. Because of their inspiration, their good example, I really saw who I should be as an attorney in this society. This is the third year in a row. I've welcomed a first year class at Georgetown that's more than half women. The people who were with us in the 70s and into the 80s came to a school that was still too shaped by the past, didn't let students participate, was overcrowded, was understaffed, didn't have enough faculty. It was a time of foment, not just politically in this city and in this nation, but for the school. They brought about a lot of change while they were here. And the shaking up clearly has produced the Georgetown of today that is stronger academically than it's ever been. So I am just enormously grateful to the students from that period and I hope I invite them to come and take a look because I think they'll be very proud of the difference they've made. We couldn't have gotten here without them and we're not going to get a step further without them being even more involved tomorrow. We're about the business of teaching and we're doing it in an environment where people really take care of one another. <laughs>